Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today I am going to be drawing your guys' OCs. I have already drawn three of them and selected three of them, but I'm selecting them from a uh, Discord channel, which is called Your OCs, which is on my Discord server. So if you'd like to join the Discord server, feel free to use the link in the description. But I'm going to say this right now, that if your intention is just for me to draw your OC and that's your reason for joining the Discord channel, please don't. Um, the Your OCs channel was not initially for me to draw people's OCs. It was just a place for people to share their OCs with one another. And if people want to draw each other's OCs, they can. And the whole Discord server in general is just for a place for people to converse and share art um, with people that have, you know, similar mindset. It is not a place for you to just, you know, bombard me with asking for me to draw your OCs or anything like that. I'm not going to do this too, too often because um, like I said, that's not the purpose of the channel itself, nor is that the purpose of the server. But I will be trying my best to do this every so often again. I haven't done one in a super long time. So I'm going to be selecting both from the Discord server every so often and maybe my Instagram once again. So for today's first OC that we are going to be drawing. So this is from I don't know if your name is Tittle, T-I-T-L on Discord. And uh, this is their OC, Moon. So Moon is 15 to 16 years old. Um, he isn't good with people, he loves to sleep, and he has tons of scars over his body. I'll make sure to put a little reference image somewhere on the screen so that you guys can see who I am drawing and which references I was looking at to draw said character. So they do have tons of scars on their body and he has like healing powers that actually heal wounds. But because of a reaction with another power in his body, it really doesn't heal his wounds. It reverses the time of his body, if that makes sense. So he would bleed to death when he activates his power. So yeah, so it, it just like the whole demeanor of the character and just like the artwork, the character kind of brought my uh, it brought it to my attention because I actually really like the color palette. I thought the character was very cute. So yeah, as soon as they posted this into the Discord channel, I was like, I, I do like the character quite a bit. I think he's very cute. So I wanted to draw him. I do think I draw, I, I might have drawn him a little bit younger compared to how you portrayed them. So I do apologize if he looks a, a little bit more uh, baby faced, I guess. So yeah, I decided to go I think for the most part, all three of them are basically just portrait up and they're not fully, fully complete, if that makes sense, because each artwork would take a much longer time for me to fully render. I did render them up to a point where they kind of seem complete, but for the most part, I would still call them unfinished. So it's just kind of more of a glorified sketch, if anything. So it's very much similar to how I approached um, previous uh, drawing your OCs video just so I can make sure to fit three in a timely manner and that I can show you guys all in real time. So for the sketching portion, I'm doing the usual method. So I will talk about it a little bit. I am starting off with just like the base and I usually start off with the face first. And then I try my best to kind of figure out a pose a little bit. I don't remember if this one specifically had um, kind of like a rough draft done. So sometimes when I'm planning out poses or I'm planning out the composition or something like that, I actually have been using a larger painting brush to kind of plan things out before I actually start to sketch. Now, sometimes I dim down the, that kind of rough sketch quite a bit, so I actually can't really see it sometimes when I film, but I don't think this one had one. I think I just went straight in with just sketching in general. So yeah, I also really liked his hair. I do apologize. I kind of change his hair every so often so that I could try to fix things uh, that didn't make sense to me because I wasn't looking carefully at the reference enough. So I do apologize if I kind of change the hair um, every so often to try to fit it back to what the OC actually looks like because I think the hair is, uh, I don't know. I think for me, I drew the hair a little bit too long and then I made it shorter and then I think I was trying to figure out how to tie his hair up um, and then I almost forgot that it's kind of like a half updo. So yeah, I think that's what happens to me sometimes when I draw characters that I'm not familiar with, um, but I focus a little bit too much with juggling, trying to make the sketch look okay and decent versus trying to make it look accurate to the character. So I think the three characters that I chose today, I did draw them very much in my style. Usually when I draw fan art of other people's OCs, or not OCs, like other people's characters, let's say like of 
pre-existing like anime characters, manga characters, like that, etc. Game characters, like Genshin characters. I try my best to incorporate a lot of the, the features into it if they're very prominent. So let's say, I don't remember who it was specifically. I think Xiao or is it Xiao? There's some people who have like a lower lash line that's very prominent. So sometimes I will try to keep that in mind. For this character, uh, I did try to keep their lash line a little bit on the larger side too, making their eyelashes on the bottom side a little bit more prominent because that is how the original poster has also drawn their character. So I tried my best to kind of keep it in a little bit of the same realm if I could. Uh, but for the most part, I did want to draw it more or less in my style because I feel like if I didn't, kind of defeats the purpose a little bit. So yeah, uh, now that I have the sketch finished, I've duplicated the sketch. I've changed the non-hidden one to multiply and I've lightened it to a more of a warmer brown color or kind of like a warmer purple color. Then I made a new layer and set the background color to be more of a a light orangey-ish muted color and then we added a little bit more of that dark gray kind of looming over on the right upper hand side and then after that I made another new layer so that we can actually start to color the character. So I try my best to add a little bit more of that orangey tone to his face as well or add a little bit more warmth around his eyes uh, a little bit to like almost the bridge of his nose just because I do, like I said, I'm trying my best to kind of balance between drawing things in my style, but I'm trying to make sure the character looks like your character. So I do apologize that this one looks probably the least like your character. So I do apologize about that, but I did have a lot of fun coloring him and drawing him in general. I also like the fact that he has heterochromia. So it gave me a little bit of opportunity to kind of uh, finagle a little bit with his eyes. So we have kind of more of that greenish color, I think. It's green, at least. I do apologize. I should have prepped a little bit better for these. I usually have the reference open on my phone. So on the, I think the left side of my iPad, you can't see it cause it's off screen. I do have a phone stand with my phone and I have the reference open, but I always forget that my phone has a really uh, deep orangey overcast over the entire image because I always have the blue light filter thing on at all times for my phone because I usually use my phone at night too or in the dark so I usually like having it like that so it doesn't like blind me when I use my phone but I hopefully it didn't warp the colors too too much so hopefully the eye colors are correct and the hair color is somewhat correct um if it isn't I do apologize I'll I'll make sure to pay more closer attention to make sure that colors are a little bit more accurately in the future. But uh, process wise, I like to start from the face to the eyes to the hair. And then after the hair, I fill out the rest of the body and the rest like basically the clothing section, anything below the neck down, I finish that afterwards. So usually when I color, I do go section by section, but I try my best to shade and add highlights or add the appropriate shadows or color shifts that I want to that section before moving on uh, just because I don't really like filling in flats per se unless I'm doing line work so if I'm doing flats and I'm doing line work that's when I kind of do the shadows like afterwards but for the most part if I'm painting on one layer like this for the all the colors I like to kind of like as you can see like where his hands are, I've already put in a little bit of that blue and the warmer tone before moving on to the sweater. And then once I have the sweater filled in, I will shade the sweater, add some of the shadows and the detailing. So just because it'll make it a lot easier for me to kind of focus on one part, make sure it looks all right before I merge the layers and I have to start to render and clean things up. It just kind of makes my process a little bit faster if I kind of break it down into the smaller pieces rather than doing every flat and then trying to keep things clean by doing the shadows over top of everything when there's like a bunch of different color shifts or different tones of the color anyway. So I didn't show much of the footage of me changing the sketch color to match a little bit closer with each individual portion, but I like to do that mostly to the face area just to make it a little bit more warmer and a little bit softer. And then after that, I merge my sketch with my colors. Uh, but I'm not merging it with the background because I want to have an easier time rendering the character without having to worry about the gradation in the background. Um, but once I have the 
character kind of merged together, I am starting with the sharp render brush and I am going ahead and basically trying to finish everything up. So I'm cleaning up stuff and I'm trying to render certain things to a certain degree so that it looks a little bit more finished. But like I said, for all three of them, there are going to be some areas that look just a little bit more loose or a little bit less finished compared to the rest because I didn't have the time to do every character to the fullest. I think I spent anywhere between an hour to two hours on each of them so that uh, I could give like a proper amount of time to each of them but also not spend like an eternity on them because sometimes I take some pieces too far and I could work eight hours on one. Sometimes I go super quickly and I work only three hours so it's like there's kind of like an in-between. Sometimes if I really, really take my time, sometimes it could be 18 hours kind of thing. So yeah, just to keep things a little bit under the same time umbrella, about two hours was my limit for each of these. So in total, six hours of uh, drawing, coloring, and painting basically all together. And yeah, I tried my best to make sure that the footage was a little bit more in bite-sized pieces. Because um, I didn't want to cut it too too much, hence why the video is still quite long. But I wanted to make sure that each person's OCs was given about the same amount of time for each. And I tried my best to make sure to include both the sketching and the coloring portion of each. So that you guys can see kind of like the before and after. And I will try my best during this kind of voiceover. Especially for, I think, the last two. I There's some things I do need to explain a little bit more. I did do the, like, the way that you guys are going to see the OCs and stuff are is the same order that I drawn them in. So I think this one's kind of more up my alley in terms of characters that probably are a little bit more in my comfort zone. The other ones have a bit of more... One has a contrasty color palette, the other one has a little bit more of a, like a different feel to the reference. So I'll explain my choices either of colors or of why I changed certain things because of just like personal choices versus like what I see on the references and all that jazz. But tr I tried my best to stay faithful to the actual character's reference. So yeah, I, I did try my best to do that if anything. So for the little kind of like, I don't think it's gingham, maybe like plaid kind of patterning for his sweater, I did make a new layer. I set it to multiply. I chose almost like a dark uh, gray color. And I went ahead and put that over the sweater in some areas and then I'll merge it back into the sweater afterwards. So I'm, I made sure to do the patterning after I finished the general shading for it. Just because I don't want to accidentally paint over the, the stripes and then we have to, to repaint it again. So here is the time lapse for the OC just so you guys can see technically the full process. I'll put the actual time lapse at the end alongside with the final image. But thank you again to Tittle? T-I-T-L for submitting your OC and allowing everyone to see your wonderful OC in the uh, OC channel. Yeah, because I had a lot of fun drawing him. I think he's a very cute character. I do like the premise of his character as well, so yeah. Oh, I, I forgot a stripe or two on his sleeve, so yeah, not quite finished yet. But yeah, here is your OC and the time lapse once again. I will come back for the next OC. Moving on to the second OC, and I don't know if this OC has a name that was listed, um, and I'm a little bit confused whether or not they're also with another OC that was posted literally just before them. So I'm not sure if they're part of the Victorian OG fashion OCs that another person was also drawing, but this is from Lunar, so that's L-L-U-N-A-R-R, -R, and they have this wonderfully, I don't know, I love this color palette for the OC, so it kind of drew me to want to draw him. So, um, also I love formal wear, so I really like the, the outfit that you put him in. So yeah, we're starting a little bit of a different kind of uh, eye shape, I guess. It's a little bit more of that thinner, more stern 
I don't know how to explain it. It's very different compared to how I usually draw because I usually draw OCs with a lot bigger, shinier eyes, if anything. But this one has more of that kind of thinner eye shape, a little bit of a longer face kind of thing. But I will shift up the face up towards his like his eyes because so we can center it a little bit because I did draw it a little bit funny. Um, I'll put in the nose. We have the general shape for the skull as well. But um, he also has two moles or beauty marks and I wanted to make sure that I was drawing it correctly. So in the reference, um, I don't know if it's flipped or which one is flipped, but the, the little headshot next to the actual main reference that I was looking at has the moles on the other side. So I wasn't sure if it was flipped or anything. So I kind of stuck with the, the main reference that showed more of the, the knee up of your OC character. So that is kind of what I was focusing mostly on. And I kept this one very simple. I apologize that I kind of did a very simple pose for him. It's very much just... I've done this pose a lot if I want to draw gloves where they have one hand reaching across and the other one kind of touching the other wrist. So it looks like they're fiddling with the gloves. But I, I like the gloves quite a bit. So yeah, I kind of wanted to include them somehow. And I, I like to include the hands somewhere in the portrait if it's applicable, if I can, just to make it less of a what it feels like a yearbook photo, if anything, especially if the character is facing forward. So I wanted to at least do that. So his hair is very, I don't know, fluffy and floofy. So I tried my best to give him as much uh, detail in the hair so that it kind of fits the whole aesthetic a little bit too. And it gives me a little bit of context to when I actually color the character. So um, of what you could see the, of the character when I put up the reference for you guys to see, he does have more of a, I don't know if it's considered like an off-white or a not quite a beige it's kind of like a sand color ish almost a little bit more muted if anything but I wanted to make sure that I had different strands and details in the sketch before I do the coloring because I know I kind of struggle sometimes coloring a lot lighter hair colors because I don't want to overly darken the hair color to the point where I accidentally change the entire value of the hair by adding shadow and then sometimes when the hair is super light highlights get a little bit in that weird zone I know I have troubles coloring white hair sometimes because you have to really focus on a lot of the shadows rather than the highlights because highlights most likely you can't get any brighter than the white that you're probably coloring it in unless you're doing it kind of like an off-white um, via context and stuff. Oh, I didn't really talk about this in the other one because I don't think I included any footage, but usually for the sketch, for certain parts, I do like going back and kind of darkening up and changing the line with variation a little bit here and there, especially like for the hair or certain like creases or crisscrossing of lines near the clothing and stuff just to give it a little bit more depth before I actually start to color. So at this point, I've already duplicated the sketch. I've changed it to multiply and I am kind of fiddling with the background color. So his color palette is very much in the neutral color. It's slightly on the warmer side, but I decided that I wanted the background to be kind of the opposite. I wanted it to be a little bit on the cooler side so that uh, all the colors for him kind of pops out a little bit better and a little bit more. So that's kind of what I went with. Very simple, just kind of like grayish, gray blue, muted colors for the background. So for the skin tone, so I apologize that my camera is not going to be able to do this justice and it might look overly saturated or very hard to see at some point because my camera had a hard time picking up the contrast. So at the very end, you'll see actually the, the, the tone of his skin tone because you can see that I tried to change the gain and exposure of my camera so that I could pick up uh, his skin tone a little bit better, but it just looks like everything else is blown out. Like the hair color that I'm using isn't actually like a stark white, it's kind of like an off-white, and then it looks pure white almost. So yeah, it, I'm kind of like fiddling around both with my camera settings, but also changing a bunch of the colors. So I made his hair basically pretty white in the very beginning. Like I said, I made it more of an off-white, but I noticed that his hair is on the warmer side and it's not quite white per se. I would say like, like I said, it's kind of like more tan or it's a little bit um, sand colored. I don't know what color you would consider this, but I wanted to make sure that I didn't make it too light in a sense. Um, 
So I changed it several times. I'd add an overlay layer and a multiply layer to kind of help me change the color to fit better with the OC before adding in the shadows again, because I had a, like a general shape for the shadows and then I will know where to put the band of highlights as well. But I didn't want to do so until I knew I got the base hair color a little bit more correct. And I did my best to kind of vary up a lot of the the values in the hair so that it doesn't appear too flat either because I feel like lighter hair I sometimes render a little flat because I'm scared to go too dark so I did my best to shift the hue and the values a little bit so it doesn't read too flat. Moving on to the outfit. So inside shirt, kind of the colored shirt is kind of more of a warmer gray color. So I decided to shade a little bit with a cooler tone here and there and then adding in a little bit of highlight. And then for his jacket, it, his jacket is quite dark. Um, but it's not as dark as I probably rendered it here. It's just that my camera is having a hard time picking up this color, like I said. So uh, it does read almost pitch black compared to like my sketch and stuff. So I do apologize that you won't be able to see it super properly. So I tried my best to adjust the lighting here and there where I can. I also included the gloves and I think the gloves once again is kind of one of my favorite parts to render. I, I don't know what it is about the texture of kind of more that either silky gloves or leather gloves. I like painting. There's just some something fun about the color shift but also like the contrast between highlights and the shadows that you can get like stark shadows that are smooth but also like have some sh like sharp edges because like of the joints of the hands and stuff. I don't know, it's fun for me. So I kind of did a off gray color that's more kind of cool and then I kind of added in his hair color into the gloves so that we can kind of keep the palette, like color palette a little bit consistent. <sighs> okay, so uh... Yeah, I did a lot of color adjustments where I could um, for the clothing just because I did think that maybe I've drawn his coat and stuff a little bit too dark and maybe things weren't reading as warm as they should be so I tried my best to color adjust things. I've also added a little bit more highlights to the gloves. In the uh, reference, the clothes are more or less done in flats um, for the most part, so I'm not sure what kind of texture or material the gloves were. I kind of made them a little bit more, I don't know if they're like silky-ish, so I made more of a harsher white section in the gloves too, as long with, like, along with the kind of like the shadows and stuff. I don't know if you guys can tell I'm super scatterbrained because I'm trying to, my best to remember what choices I made <laughs> for each of the sketches because I sketched these I think all three on different days and it's been almost a week since I've sketched and drawn and color all of these so I'm trying to rack my brain around on some of the choices that I made for this so hopefully it kind of lines up with what I was initially doing but after I kind of filled with the colors I did merge them once again and we are in the rendering phase. So I did focus a lot of my energy on the face because once again, I'm working more or less with like a portrait. So I did make sure that, you know, the eyes look somewhat accurate. Uh, they don't look too off or like, you know, crooked or too derpy. I'm trying to focus on also the little strands of hair near his face so that I can kind of keep things a little bit more clear. I also love the contrast of the lighter hair and more of the the warmer, darker skin tone that he has. So I did definitely wanted to include a little bit more of that hair strands that kind of come into his face because they're going to be a little bit more visible. So I, lo I love doing that. And like I said, I did try my best to add as much... Um, context i guess for the hair so that i knew where to add certain hair strands and where to shade because like i said lighter hair kind of intimidates me a little bit when i have to color uh like this sometimes i think it's not too bad when i get to do it with line work because there's a lot of color adjustment i can do like on the go really quickly but when i'm painting like this sometimes color adjusting is a little bit difficult so let's talk about his outfit i am a big fan of this kind of uh, attire. So like I said, I'm not too sure if your OC was with Moridachi's OC, which was listed above, um, but they kind of have like a similar vibe. They seem a little bit of opposites to color palette wise because the OC uh, kind of pasted above actually has more of a white color scheme instead of like the dark uh, fabrics that this guy wears and he has black gloves versus this guy has white gloves kind of thing. Um, yeah, they seem very much like opposites, if anything. So I think that's nice. I think, wait, let me check. I'm looking on the Discord a little bit. 
they're boyfriends, so maybe they're from the same universe? I'm not sure if that was in context with the person, like I said, listed above, so yeah. Maybe the two contrasting characters are, are the ones that are boyfriends, so yeah. <laughs> I apologize, I don't have much information on the OCs. I didn't want to pry too much into it because I do like picking OCs and kind of making it a surprise on who I chose. Uh, so I didn't want to pry into having too much information asked of the person who posted. So I do apologize if some things are a little bit out of character or if I don't know how to refer to them or if I get their gender wrong, I do apologize. <laughs> so uh, hair-wise, I had a lot of fun. Um, getting a little bit less intimidated. I also had a lot of fun putting in the shadows for the face. So you can see I added some purple tones to the skin um, near where the hair touches the face. And I do that usually anyways. So yeah, I do like the, the purple with this kind of skin tone. Uh, just probably also because I made his uh, face a little bit more saturated with warmth of a little bit of that reddish tone here and there. I don't think it was necessary because it does look like he's blushing a little bit more. But yeah, here's here's the end result. I do apologize that my brain is super scattered when explaining things. But hopefully this looks somewhat like your character. I tried my best to keep... Um, facial features a little bit similar to your character because he has a little bit more of the sharper eyes uh more of that be shown in face i guess and yeah hopefully i have the beauty marks in the right places i i'd hope i didn't botch that up so yeah that is the second one finished and we'll go ahead and move on to the quick time lapse and then i'll show you guys the final uh final image also hopefully you guys will be able to see the more accurate colors on this hopefully because i think that's probably more accurate compared to how my webcam is picking up the colors but yeah i'll meet you guys when we work on the third one Okay, so moving on to the third one. So I think in past sessions where I've drawn other people's OCs like this, I tend to draw three people's OCs and I don't like making the whole video like one particular character or like, how do I explain this? I draw too many guys versus I draw too many girls. So we are gonna be drawing a girl this time. So this uh, OC is named Jess. So this is from Jess Jess and their character loves chocolate and thinks turtles are cute. She has small wings and hoodies. Can also be just blue with pixelated Space Invader icon in light blue. She has short pink hair with space buns and has yellow starry eyes. Uh, she has a little sensor on her head. Now. Uh, the reference that they posted would be this one, but the, like, I think later on they posted another, let me see, yes, they have another reference of their OC. Now, I think I didn't realize that they had a second OC, uh, reference, so I, there are some details I'm gonna fix and change, but I'm, there's some details that I think I just missed in general now that I'm looking at the reference once again. So I do apologize that there's probably a lack of consistency. Um, so the first portion of this drawing, probably up until the coloring portion, I've been following one reference, which was the one that was first like initially posted, but then I'm going to make some small adjustments with the second one kind of in mind, which is mostly just the hair that's going to change, I think, for the most part. But I didn't realize uh, I probably missed some patterning on her sleeve um, because I forgot that, well, one, both her hands are in view, and two, I didn't realize I missed the patterning just in general, probably because I was looking back and forth between the two references. Therefore, I should have just committed to one reference to use for drawing the OC. Uh, rather than flipping between the two. So it's kind of uh, oopsies on my, my side. Um, but I really wanted to draw this OC. I really, 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 really like pink haired OCs. I think they're really cute. Um, and I don't have a lot of experience, I think, just painting things that are just pink in general. Uh, sometimes I feel like maybe that's also like a weak point I have. Pink hair is a little bit difficult for me to to manage in terms of shading and highlight sometimes uh, just because sometimes I feel like I lean it too flat or too muted or not vibrant enough so I think that's like kind of the problem I had with coloring the hair for this one is that I feel like it was too muted and I do like the bright colors of your OC so I, I, I think I, I maybe 
maybe it's not too bad. Maybe I'm remembering incorrectly that maybe the coloring actually looks okay. So for the hair, you can actually see that I did kind of more of that straight cut across for, or like straight blunt bangs for their OC. But once I put in the colors and stuff, we're gonna have to go back in and I'm gonna change her hair style to be a little bit more of like, uh, kind of like side swept bangs-ish kind of because um, looking at the second reference, that's kind of how the bangs were. And it kind of gave me a little bit more context on the hair in general. So I'm gonna kind of fix up her hair here and there. I think I tried to fix up the shape of her hair as well, just a little bit. Actually, maybe the the patterning on the sleeves actually won't, might not be visible, we'll see. But you can see that once I did like just very general shading and coloring for the skin, I went back in and tried to fix up the bangs to make it look a little bit more accurate to the second uh, version. Just because the second version is a little bit of a, a different style compared to the first one. The first one's like simplified and very cute, but this one's also very cute, but it has a little bit more detailed. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that I could try to include certain things here and there. So try to fix up the bangs and we're back in to shading the skin. So I did give her the chocolate bar as well. Um, that was kind of shown in the first reference because that was kind of like, I feel like uh, a character trait that you listed. So I thought it would be important. I had a second mind to draw her holding a plush of a turtle, um, but I decided to go with the chocolate bar because it was a little bit easier for me. And I don't think I've ever rendered chocolate, like chocolate bar in that form, I guess, if that makes sense. I have done some like coloring and painting of chocolates before, but they're like, always like those little bonbons in a box and stuff. Yeah, um, eye color is yellow. I wasn't too sure if you meant starry eyes that it meant they were kind of like sparkly and yellow um, for detailing and stuff. So I do apologize if that was the case. I did not draw it like that. I also kept the little bandage on her nose from the first reference to kind of incorporate into this one as well. Cause that's why I'm saying where I kind of flip flop between the two references and I kind of merged the two. So I do apologize if the second one's supposed to be more accurate to what your character's supposed to look like. Um, Cause I kind of merged them. So sorry if it doesn't look like either of them at this point. <laughs> um, but yeah, here we have the chocolate bar. I'm gonna give it a kind of like a red wrapper and I'm gonna put in kind of like silver for the inside because it usually has like foil for the bars so mm. not too much to talk about for the coloring session I don't think for this one basically the same steps um color palette wise I or not color palette background wise I kept it with a kind of light purple I had I probably could have went with the blue as well. There's like, in the reference, there's like a squiggle of blue and dots and stuff, or like pixels in the background, which could like possibly could have been cute to put in as well. And it would have matched nicely with the bandage on her nose. So I could have probably went with blue, but I decided to go with the kind of like more lavender color. And then you guys would have saw that I had kind of like almost, I think two or three pinks picked out for the hair and I kind of settled with this hair color. Even though it's a little bit more on the dull side, I'm hopefully going to be able to brighten it up a little bit here and there um, because I was having trouble trying to make sure that the pink look accurately pink because I feel like sometimes I make it look a little bit too dusty, which might be the case right now. Uh, we'll see at the very end how it turns out because I think I might have tried to color adjust or my webcam is also just not picking up the accurate colors. So I don't really remember too, too much. But my problem is that sometimes I lean pink into peach too much versus um, more of a like purpley pink. So sometimes I have a hard time making it just like that naturally bubblegum pink, if anything. I do know bubblegum pink's a little bit on the cooler side, but I'm not a fan of like a lot of cooler pinks. I love warmer pinks. So maybe that's where I'm having conflicting problems of preference versus what I'm seeing and all that. I did try my best to incorporate the blue also as kind of the shadow color for the hair in certain areas so that we can kind of keep uh, some of the hues in the same family. So I did take the hoodie color, plopped it right into her hair, kind of chose a faded part to pick up a new kind of purpley color and then use that to shade her hair basically. I'm putting indication of wings uh, just in the background. I'm not going to be rendering these wings. It's just kind of placed as almost like as a, a design for the background but also they're part of her character so it's not too in the way just because it is kind of a last minute thought that I had to include the wings for this particular pose. So yeah. 
Oh, I did show how I adjusted the colors for this one. So basically I would uh, alpha lock my sketch and then I would manually color in certain areas to be lighter or more saturated or warmer before we start to merge everything and then we can start to render, which is what I'm doing right now. So I switch brushes once again to more of my, the sharp render so that we can kind of finish up the character and kind of clean everything up so it looks a little bit less unfinished for the most part. Now that I think about it, I think the second OC I finished a little bit more than the rest, probably because the the face was a little bit more simple and the clothing uh, color-wise was a little bit more easier for me to manage. Maybe it was because there was such high contrast as well, but this one I feel like I tried my best to finish as much as I could, um, but I feel like there was like a point where if I stopped around... Actually, no, I think all of them were still two hours, so I think I'm actually doing all of them around the same finish for the most part but because this one has a lot of lighter colors i feel like a lot of my sketchier lines here and there are a little bit more visible so i tried my best to finish it as much as i could to a certain degree without making this session too too long um but yeah i actually really like this character's ocs i i'm not sure if they're based off of your minecraft um design but i do think the the color combinations very cute i love the space theme along with the space buns and the sensor on her head is very very cute um so i always love these kinds of what they feel like more i don't know if it's fantasy or whimsical kind of ocs i think they're always very cute so hopefully in the future i'll be able to draw a few more that are more uh i don't know eccentric feeling if that makes sense i'm not sure if that's the right wording so i apologize about that but yeah, I always feel like I have nothing to say when it comes to the rendering portion because it's very much just me picking up a new color, shading it, pick up a new color, shade next to it, and kind of just making sure a lot of those sketchy lines are not visible anymore. But I think she turned out pretty cute. I hope you like it, Jess, and hope the other two people also like how I drew their OCs because I'm always worried when I draw other people's OCs that I'm drawing them very out of character. Um, but hopefully, I don't know. I, I also share like kind of like the same sentiment as other people that I always like when other people draw my OCs in their own style and you know if they have different interpretations I'm also fine with it as long as it's not uh, anything too drastic right I think <laughs> so yeah I think that's about it uh, another thing I wanted to do was like potentially in the future I don't know I was gonna do another stream on YouTube soon maybe this month we'll see if we can if i can but i was gonna say i was gonna draw over people's ocs but considering how long i stream i don't i feel like i only can do one so maybe i'll just like plan a project or something that i am going to do for that and maybe i'll turn it to do it live on youtube or something because like i said i usually feel more comfortable on twitch anyways so yeah we'll see when's the next time i'm gonna do a youtube live stream of me drawing because i would like i would love to because i know some people do not come to the twitch stream because maybe they're not used to twitch or they don't want to make an account or log in or something like that to chat or whatever it is that you have to do to chat so yeah i'll try my best to do another one sometime soon and i'll try my best to do some other sessions for uh twitch as well so that you guys can have other time zones can join in as well because i know i stream at one like particular time every time so yeah i know it's not the most convenient for people also the chocolate bar was actually very fun to to render i think it'd be fun to do a study on like foil material because i don't think i know how to color that kind of material hmm yeah, but here's the OC more or less finished. Um, I'll show you guys kind of the sketch version and every other, like kind of like the choices and all the errors and all the changes that I made during the sketching portion before we actually started to the color the character and everything. Change the hair, add the color. I did miss the checkerboard-ish pattern on her sleeve, so I do apologize about that. But hopefully she's she looks cute <laughs> uh but yeah i think that's about it i think that's it for all three of them i think the next time that i do this i'll be picking from instagram and not the discord um so i'll be looking at previously submitted uh ocs alongside if you like to submit your ocs please use this hashtag on instagram um, please do not tag me directly just use the tag um this hashtag because if you tag me directly i will not see it nor will i be looking in the tags so yeah just please use the hashtag only and thank you guys very much for sharing your OCs with me on Discord. I really appreciate it. And I always enjoy seeing your guys' OCs. So I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye!